Hi guys, welcome back to Gary's Tech. In this video, I'm going to take a look at my oil catch tank. I've now done about 1,000 miles uh, with my catch tank set up on. So if you haven't seen it already, go check the previous video where I installed it. Uh, so now I've done a thousand miles, so I want to just open it up and have a look to see how much oil has actually been collected in the catch tank itself. So I'm just going to put you up and let's have a take a look. So as I said, if you remember, uh, I fitted my catch tank up over here. Um, so obviously it runs off down underneath the uh, plenum chamber up into the uh, original um, air oil separator, which I, I replaced. So I've replaced that and then fitted this oil catch tank. So I've done a thousand miles now, so I want to open this up and have a look to see actually how much oil has actually been collected. So I haven't opened this up yet, so it will be new to me as I open it. I'm just going to stick some gloves on. Now, the other thing I want to do is actually check as well um, inside here, into the, um, the plenum chamber or inlet manifold to have a look to see um, if or how much oil is actually coming back in to the system i suspect there probably will still be a little bit because it's never going to vent it all out but again easy way to do so i'm just going to stick my finger in now now i've got some gloves on but you can probably just about see that my finger is wet so there is still some oil which will be getting back into the system the catch tank's never going to filter it all out but what i would like to see is that filtering as much out there as possible so let's open up this up now. Just stiff. Right, so there is some oil in there. Whether you can see that, there is a bit of oil in now. I'm going to tip it out into a into a into a pan in a moment. But there is a little bit in there. It's not huge amounts, um, so it has captured some. But it obviously, looks like there is still some oil getting back round into uh, the system. Um, but obviously, not as much. I mean, I can smell just smelling that already. I can smell um, almost like the exhaust fumes uh, from it. Because obviously, the the crankcase. Um, pressure or the gases that you're getting in the system is basically the blow by gases from the the pistons which then mix with the oil um, so obviously it's it's toxic stuff so you don't really want to be breathing it in but I can see that so let's go put you in over here and you can see what it looks like um, when I pour it out okay so I've just come over to my bench to have a look now I was going to pour it into something like this to measure uh, how much I'm getting out, but actually it's so little in there, there's, there's not really any point. I mean, it's probably phew, not even five to 10 mils worth. So I'm just gonna pour it out just really so I can see color of the, the color of the oil that's coming out of it. I'll just try and do it so you can see it. So you can see that's what I've just poured out. So it actually, obviously bearing in mind as well that I changed my oil, um, right before fitting this uh, catch tank so the oil's fresh as well and you can see actually the oil is actually really clean so yes it has captured some oil not particularly a lot um what i can tell though is that there is still some of the gases getting through obviously there's going to the gases will always get through but it's going to there's obviously still some oil particles within those gases getting back uh, through into the intake manifold so I might take a look at some other catch tanks and just compare those. Um, so I'll have a look to see what ones else. So I'll have a look to see what else I can find out there on the market. This was probably one of the, obviously the cheaper ones. It's only got a small uh, tank on it. So you're probably not gonna wanna be doing huge amounts of mileage, but perhaps something with a better filtration system uh, on it might actually reduce some of the gases um, or the oil particles getting back into the intake. Uh, manifold so I'm going to take a look at that see what else I can find online uh, and if I put another one on there I'll post it up and uh, let you guys know but just thought I'd just let you see uh, actually how much oil has been saved from going back into um, the intake system after about a thousand miles
So this oil would contribute to obviously all the carbon buildup that you saw in what, one of my previous videos. Uh, when I took the intake manifolds off and looked at the back of the valves, obviously if that's sitting on the back of the um, intake valves, it's going to start to stick to it, builds up obviously all the carbon deposits, etc. So that not going back into uh, the engine will certainly help uh, the running of it in terms of economy, fuel efficiency and, and power. So, um, yeah, so I'd like to obviously reduce that as much as possible. Now, you could just vent it to atmosphere, but as some of you guys might uh, know already, if you check some of my comments from some, some of the other guys that have been asking questions, uh, ideally, you don't want to just let it um, vent to atmosphere. Uh, reasons being um, you need the vacuum in the crankcase um, to, one, help reduce um, oil leaks, because if you're getting high pressure inside the crankcase, um, you could then increase the chance of oil leaks because ultimately that pressure inside the crankcase needs to get out. That pressure comes from the blow-by gases um, that get past the piston rings. That pressure inside the crankcase will need to get out somewhere. Uh, as I said, you could just let it vent, vent to atmosphere, but you know, on a car like this where you're going to be revving up to 7,000 RPM, obviously not on the regular, but there will be times when you're doing that if you're, you're doing sprint you're driving. There's going to be quite a lot of pressure potentially in that crankcase so um, having a vacuum there helps take that pressure away also if you're not venting it um, and those pressures can't get out that's higher pressure inside the crankcase the pressure inside there is then obviously going to be acting against the pistons as they're trying to move down so technically um, you would be reducing the power i couldn't tell you how much it's going to reduce it by obviously you'd need to do some tests but if you just think about it logically um, having a vacuum inside the crankcase um, will be better for it. Um, and of course, obviously, these gases, um, they shouldn't be vented um, back to the atmosphere. Generally, in most countries, there's probably a law that you can't vent it back to the atmosphere. Certainly in the UK, there is, um, and it will fail an MOT if, um, you know, if the MOT tester notice that the crankcase ventilation is not being vented back into the engine. Because these gases are toxic, as I said before, um, ultimately it is the exhaust emissions and then mixed in with the oil, so it's worse than the exhaust emissions on its own, um, and that's just going to be going going straight to the atmosphere. So that's why, by law, it should be vented back into the engine to be burned off again. So anyway, so that's what I found so far. Uh, again, if you like these videos, you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Okay, thanks guys. Take care.